Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be repairing this Google Pixel 3a that someone threw out. The Pixel 3a is a cheaper model of Google's Pixel 3 smartphone. Featuring a plastic back, the 3a is more durable than a glass-backed phone. This one is badly cracked and doesn't light up when plugged in. While I received this phone in a lot that I purchased on eBay for around 140 Australian dollars, it appears the seller had actually just pulled all of these phones from an e-waste bin. How do I now know that? Well, I called up the previous owner of this very Google Pixel and they told me what they did with it. More on that later. While the phone wasn't turning on, using an amp meter I can see it's drawing about 1 amp of current when plugged in, which indicates the phone is charging and likely just has a dead display. But before we get started, I'd like to thank my mates over at iFixit for sending in a replacement display for this phone. If you're looking for some parts or one of their awesome toolkits, I will leave a link down in the description. To begin, I'll place the Google Pixel onto my heat mat, which will soften the adhesive on the display. I left this for about five minutes before coming in with my iSlack suction cup tool to be able to separate the display. This lifted so much easier than I was expecting, as it's clear to me now that this is a replacement display panel. The adhesive used has held the display in just fine, although definitely isn't very hard to remove, which for me is kind of a bonus. And I'm really not sure what the original adhesive would have been like. After running a plastic pick around the edge, I was able to lift up the display panel and unscrew the two Torx screws securing in place a metal bracket and the display cable. After removing those and the display, I am able to remove any larger glass shards that remain on the frame. This is also a good time to clean up the frame to remove as much of the old adhesive as possible. From what I can tell, the adhesive used to secure in the replacement display had just been applied over the original stuff, which isn't the best practice, so we're going to be taking as much of the adhesive off and trying to get it back to the bare plastic before applying our new adhesive. I started by scraping away at the old adhesive using a plastic spudger. I then came in with some alcohol to try and clean things up and get as much of that old adhesive removed as possible. One thing to note is you're never going to get it absolutely perfect. As long as you don't leave any big chunks that could leave the display not sitting entirely flush, we should be good to go. With our frame all ready to go, it's time to crack out our replacement display from iFixit so we can actually test out the Pixel 3a to see if it even works. I'll start by connecting the display cable back onto the phone and I'll simply press and hold the power button. You can see it briefly shows the battery low symbol, so I'm going to plug in the USB-C cable and let it charge up a little bit before we power it on. Booting up the phone, it launched right into a lock screen and is passcode locked. With there being contact info, I gave them a call to ensure it wasn't a lost phone, and this is what they said. Uh, so yeah, you said you'd gotten a Pixel and it's got my in-case-of-emergency-decals on it. Gave it to the spot, um, office work kind of thing, I think. So I'm just going to uh, reset it. Is there anything you needed to uh, back up no, off of it? Fine. I would have gotten anything. If you could just reset it for me, that would be really good. From the call, we learnt the last owner tossed it into an e-waste bin at Officeworks, a stationery store in Australia. It's likely an employee has dumpster dive through, saved a bunch of phones and is selling them on eBay. Honestly, I'm happy he did so because all of the phones except one in that initial lot showed signs of life. It's really amazing what people throw out. Now that we know the phone works, I'm going to honour the request of the previous owner and wipe all of the data off of the phone. It's now locked with a PIN code. Whilst we wait for their response, I'm going to remove the display panel we just installed so I can apply some fresh adhesive so we can get the display panel permanently installed into the phone. For this, you can use a pre-cut set or try to make something yourself, which is what I'll be doing in my case, as I had lost the pre-cut adhesive for this model. I'll be using adhesive cut off a roll for the top and bottom sections with liquid adhesive on the sides as I don't have any tape thin enough to cover those sides. Given that the liquid adhesive is messy and sets really fast, I will attach the display first, reinstalling its bracket and two screws. 
Afterwards, I can remove all the protective film from the adhesive we just installed, as well as from the back of the display panel, and now I can apply the liquid adhesive. For this, I'm using something called E8000. What does that stand for? I've got no idea. I've only ever used this adhesive once, but it worked and did a really good job. With it applied, I can firmly press into place our Google Pixel display, hoping that everything will stay put. As you can see, the sides of the phone are completely loose and the adhesive definitely didn't work. So I'll need to open up the display and apply some more adhesive. I believe I may have just taken too long to apply the adhesive and get the display panel seated correctly, or maybe I just didn't add enough. Either way though, I'll need to do this a second time. For this, I'll actually be using B7000. Where are they coming up with these names? I have no idea. It's exactly the same stuff. It even smells just as toxic. This time around though, I'll apply a little bit more than I did last time and try and be a little bit quicker with my application. After pressing the display panel into place, I set a whole box of phones on top to apply pressure while the glue was drying. About 30 minutes later, I removed it and cleaned off the excess from the side of the phone. And this time around, you can see there is no play in the side of the phone and everything is sitting nice and flush. The last thing we need to do is test out our phone and get it up and running. After some messing around, I got the phone actually activated and got it past the pin lock screen. After setting up the phone, you can see everything has been reset and we have a working Google Pixel 3 on Android 10. The last thing that's left to do is to give this phone a really good clean. The most dirtiest and grimiest part of this phone was actually the speaker grills and they were absolutely caked with dirt and grime. Using some alcohol and a toothbrush, I could clean those up as well as the USB-C connector. I also gave the back of the phone a good wipe down and of course removed the plastic protective film and we're done. So this is it, a phone that was once so close to being broken down into its core elements and being recycled was saved and repaired into a working condition. This phone was still being sold by Google when I got a hold of it, so it couldn't have been used for all that long. To reiterate on what I said earlier, it's amazing what people throw out because they think it's not fixable or they think no one wants it. I believe a lot of e-waste turns out to actually be things other people could have used or have fixed, which is such a shame. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any tips or what tools are used to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.